the topic today is a very very important but interesting aspect of law because it deals with another very noble and important profession of medical sciences now the practice of law and the practice of medicine go hand in hand but as far as the practice of law is concerned as a lawyer you have to cater to every section of society including that of medical practitioners and doctors so as a lawyer you must know a lot about the medical practice because as a lawyer of tomorrow your clientele may include doctors also your clientele may include hospitals your clientele may include medical colleges medical institutions your clientele may include pharmaceutical companies and your clientele may include patients who have undergone treatment under hospitals and doctors and they have their set of grievances so invariably or not as a professional lawyer you have to deal with these aspects of law and therefore it's a very very important branch of practice and that includes a lot of statutes because there is no single statute covering all the health related laws or medical laws there are various statutes and various topics into law and medicine i'm happy that now this area of practice is also getting some prominence nobody on this earth can say that he has never come across a doctor one can safely say that in his lifetime he never had any interaction with a lawyer you can escape meeting a lawyer or dealing with a lawyer but you can't escape dealing a doctor even as a lawyer you need a doctor so you must know that even in the medical field there is a lot of variety now talking of variety into medical sciences it's not that only the allopathy which is the most prevalent type of medical treatment is the single most type of medical sciences in fact allopathy has become prevalent and popular very recently 
and that has become so because the government ruling at that time trusted this type of medical treatment. In India, allopathy was introduced by Britishers, British government. <coughs> and once the government supports a path, it automatically becomes popular among masses. Once the government supports any stream, the lot of research R&D ha starts happening because money is pumped in. But if you have any doubt that there is only one stream of medical sciences that it, allopathy, that's not true. And in fact, there is a lot of deficiency In this stream of medical treatment that is called allopathy, there are so many other variety of medical treatments. And prevalent practicing treatments are there. But they are not that popular because, as I said, that you need a lot of R&D keep happening a lot of money to be pumped in into any stream to make it prevalent and up to the mark. You have to have a lot of inventions. Now the way allopathy had begun, there is a lot of change from last century till this century. Earlier the allopathic doctor used to get the symptoms of your disease through touching your pulse. There were expert doctors who used to just watch you while you walk inside their chambers that this is the problem. You must have gone through the experience that if you visit a doctor, he checks your eyes, he asks you to put your tongue out, he puts torch, he presses his hand in your stomach. Now all this is not required because the current lot of doc doctors depend more on machines. The moment you enter into a doctor's clinic or a hospital, he happily writes 10-20 tests to be conducted and then sends you to pathological lab. Go and get yourself tested. On the basis of the test, he will determine what is the problem. Maybe possible half the tests are useless. Because the dependence has become more on machine. And it's not in the medical sciences, everywhere. Even in the field of law, when we were law trainees or law students, we used to sit in the library, search the citations through books. Today it's computer. You have to just click and the search is done and you get it, shortcut. So Shrut Sanhita enlightens you about methods of surgery of various parts of bodies. And the, the kind of surgery to be used through which kind of instruments are also prescribed. The measurement of the instrument is also prescribed in Sushrut Sahita. Think of the amazing knowledge and documented knowledge. You'd be surprised to know that the modern equipments of surgery take cue from Sushrut Sahita that this kind of design of scissors should be there, this kind of design for the knife should be there to cut this part of the body so that it should not end up harming another part of the body. 
And this is all documented. It's not fiction that I'm telling you. It's all available. Charak Sahita, another part of Ayurveda, talks about medical sciences. This is surgery sciences. Medical sciences you'll find in Charak Sahita. Charak Sahita gives you detail about the type of essences taken from the plants, from the metal, that which metals essence mixed with this plant or this powder gives this effect of treatment. And Ayurveda emphasizes not only on the treatment but also precautions that you should not get contaminated with a disease. If you follow these steps, now you might have heard about your dadi or your nani inherently knowing certain things. The moment you cough, she'll say, thoda adrak chuslo. Has she done some medical course? No. She knows because this was the inherent tradition we had. We imbibed all this knowledge. Somebody proposes you good, eat some good. Somebody gives you tulsi. There are so many things which are happening in daily life, you know that. And the one who is prescribing is not even graduated from any medical science. Because this was your tradition, given by your elders to you. Ask your dadi or your nani, she must not have heard of Charak Sahita. But she knows. So Charak Sahita 